Greetings, this is Daniel Tal from Placemaker, and I'm happy to introduce our version of Placemaker for Revit. We've had the SketchUp version for several years, and now we're introducing a version for all the people that are using Revit. And I'm going to go over how it works and give a quick demo of what it does. If you'd like to find out more about what Placemaker can do, go to our website, suplacemaker.com. If you're not familiar with the tool itself, it imports in high resolution aerials, high quality terrain, 3D buildings, roads, water, and tree. We also have other offer services for our SketchUp users in 3D Mesh, an AI generated accurate survey. So everything here is available except the 3D textured mesh cities for Revit. And you can go here to suplacemaker.com and check out how it works. I also want to talk to you about and share about how we go about selling our data so you can import it into your model. There's two approaches here. You can either get a subscription or you can do a pay as you go product. If you get the subscription, the data is a bit cheaper and some of the data is free, as you can see here. Or you can just go pay as you go. You pay a little bit more for the data and you can import in stuff on demand in either instance. So let's go ahead and demonstrate how the placemaker for Revit version works. Placemaker for Revit is an add-on for Revit. You can see right here, here's the executable installable file. You download it, you double click, and it will then install into Revit. In Revit, you can see I'm in a 3D view, and up here I have my add-on installed, and I'm gonna click on Placemaker and we'll start the process to import in a small area with all these different features. I'm gonna to go to select place and I'm gonna click select a place there and it's gonna bring up a location for me on this map. We do ask that you be patient using this tool as we release it. It does work very well. It can just be slow at times considering the internet usage. And here's a little portion of Boston just real quick how this interface works. You can see there's my bounding box. I can bring that in. I can also do select large area. And so when I select an area, it can actually do up to 10 square miles. But just keep in mind that it's a lot of information to bring in. So that's the first thing you could see if this little Boston area that I'm going to do here, I'm going to do this little corner right down here. But just wanted to start out with select place. You can enable a large area. If you uncheck it, it'll go back to that smaller area. I'm going to zoom in on this location and you can see it's going to update the, um, the image as it zooms in and again be patient with the viewer as it as it updates here. There we have, this is the area I'm actually going to import, just a couple of square blocks here. I'm going to click on import area and there it brings it in. Again, be patient with the import times and process, it's something that will improve with time. Just want to show you what I have. I have this aerial within Revit. And this is just the location map that we're going to use to import the rest of the items. So next, I'm going to go to import imagery. Import imagery. I'll click on that. It'll open up and load the dialog screen for me. Now I have two options of the type of aerials I can actually download. I have Mapbox and Nearmap. Mapbox is, uses less credits and Nearmap uses more. They both offer super high quality for t urban areas. I'm going to click on Nearmap and I'm, I'm going to select high. If I do max, it'll be a very refined aerial down to about seven, three to seven centimeters. We're just going to do high and I'll show you how that works. And I'm going to click save and import. And then I'm going to click on the tile. Just how many placemaker credits it will cost to import near map. My total credits are right there under my name, my license, Daniel Tal. So I have 30,034 30, credits. And to bring in this aerial requires 800 credits. Now, if I was a subscriber, and you can see this on the website again, it would cost 480 credits. Because I'm using the pay as you go version of, of placemaker, it's going to cost me 800 credits. I'm going to go ahead and confirm the order. 
and it's going to download the image and place it inside of Revit. Process took it about 30 seconds. You can see the different tiles. I'm going to zoom in here to show you the quality. Here, it's a really refined, high resolution aerial, aerial you can see. A good portion of the streetscape, buildings, parked cars. And again, this wasn't the highest resolution aerial. I could have gone to an even higher quality level with Near Map and even made it even further refined. So that's how you import in an aerial into Near Map. And we're, next, we're going to do buildings, roads, and the other items in here. Next, I'm going to import in some buildings. I'm going to go to Import Buildings. And again, you have two options here. You have OSM, or OpenStreetMap, which has great global coverage around the world. So London, UK, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, China, Asia, the Middle East, everything. And then for the United States, we also have the Microsoft building set. They're a less accurate building height set, but they have coverage for every single building, almost every single building, 220 billion, 220 million buildings in the United States. We're going to go with OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap data is great for areas like that are core cities. That's where most of their data resides. I'm going to click on Save on Import. I'm going to click on this. Again, it's going to ask me, do I want to import it in for the tile or for the entire thing? I'm going to hit Yes, Import it in for the entire thing. Now, for subscribers, you don't pay for OpenStreetMap data. If you are doing pay-as-you-go, which is what I'm demonstrating is the pay-as-you-go version, it's going to cost me 13 credits to bring in these buildings. I'm going to hit Confirm. And it's going to bring in 307 buildings. It actually indicated in the dialog that was off to the side. But here they are. There's the buildings that it's importing in right now. I'm going to take this down into a 3D view so you can see what we have. Cool. Go back to top. And there you have your buildings. And we're going to further explore how this all looks towards the end. Process is the same if we're going to do roads, paths, rail lines, trees, and water. So we're, I'm going to quickly do all these um, and show you how that works in a kind of fast forward video. So here I am, I'm going to import in the roads, OpenStreetMap roads. It's bringing the roads in real quickly. Then I'm going to do the trails, and you'll see them in and around the park and other parts of that little one square mile. Next one is the water, and that water is usually universally available data, and then the last one is going to be trees. And then we'll look and see how this all looks. Here is the final completed model inside Lumion and doing a quick Lumion animation. You could see the high resolution aerial, all the images, the trees. I actually have the roads faded back here so you can see the aerial, but the paths are still there and the water. It's a very simple, quick process to get this to work in Revit, and that's why we've released it. So go ahead and check our website. I'm going to end by showing one more thing here. I didn't demonstrate that you can bring in terrain and put your aerial and objects on this in Revit. You could see here this is a Revit terrain model with an aerial on it, animated in Lumion. So that's another feature. I didn't show the import feature for the trains, just wanted to check it out. Thanks a lot. Thanks for letting me introduce you to Placemaker for Revit. Go to our website, suplacemaker.com, and you can check out the Revit version, all the information about the data, the data sources, how the credit system works, is all on our website. So if you have any questions, please go there. And thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day.